So, you want to hear the story? I've been meaning to do this for an age, basically since I got home with the Cervelo Caledonia and lay it next to the Focus's Elko Max that I own. And I thought, bloody hell, they're both nice bikes. Bloody hell, they look familiar. Bloody hell, they're basically the same. Only that the uh, Caledonia's got a little bit more fairing. And then I noticed upon closer inspection, visual rather than data inspection, that uh, at a glance, the seat tube on the Caledonia, the Cervelo, seems considerably steeper. And also the head angle, you know, in a visual appraisal, seemed to be a little bit more relaxed. But we'll see if that sort of translates to a ride after ride sensation. So I'm at West Head. I've been waiting for the sun to come up to tell the story, but I don't think we're going to see a lot of sun today. Neither here nor there. It was beautiful weather. Actually, for all my European friends, I hate to tell you this, it was actually 22 degrees as we drove across the Harbour Bridge at quarter past five in the morning. In other words, t-shirt weather. Anyway, I'll tell you more about the different sensations I get from the two bikes that are very similar and are graced with a basically the same group set. This one. Don't know if you can see that in the dark, but that's the Cervelo. That's got the SRAM force axis wide. So I've told you a million times, but I'll tell you again. It's a really, really compact group set. 43 chain ring at the front and a 30 inner ring, 30, which I've hardly ever used. And then a 10 to 36 at the back. So I've used the rear derailleur a lot, but hardly touched both levers at once. In other words, I haven't really activated the front derailleur at all. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my ride and I'll tell you more later. What a day! Can you see me? It's pretty bloody dark. Anyway, it's bloody beautiful. It is cycling paradise here. And uh, I'll be here for a few hours, so I'll show you when there's actually light. I'm sorry that it's not the usual beauty of Heffron Park that we so often see on my morning rides. Instead, I'm at this place. Also known as Cycling Paradise. So, like, mental note. Given the choice of a dirty concrete criterium track that's flat as a tack, and nearby home, or a slightly earlier start, zero traffic, beautiful roads, only one dead snake, and a little bit of rain, I know what I'm gonna take. It's great to be here. It's sitting on 60k an hour and I'm in complete and utter control and it's bloody beautiful. So I'm sort of going to ride and film and take in the sights all at once. Sydney siders know what I'm talking about. And uh, if you catch the, the light just right, which I think I might have today, it's just a hypnotic turnaround point. And I find it hard to ignore. Here's my point, you wanna have a look? It never 
it gets old. It's totally gorgeous. Totally, totally gorgeous. Yeah, I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. Yeah, I know it's not Heffron Park, but... So I'm going up a little hill and I thought I'd just show you the range at the back and demonstrate one of the real advantages of the wide group set. So I'm on the, the big ring at the front and I just shifted to the 36 and can you hear any grinding right now? I don't. Chain's a bit dry, got caught in the rain the other day and that's the only noise you're going to hear except for me panting. I'll take the opportunity on this ride to try and just cover off some of the basics. Okay, first of all, let's go bit by bit if we can. I'll try and be quick. Bing. Handlebars at a slow pace, but really nice. So, um, I find myself here quite often, but here is great. And also just resting like that on the flats is great car coming. We'll shut up a sec. So and then to the blips. Okay I hope you got that. I can't see if I did or filmed it or not but I've been using them a hell of a lot. Um, so much so. Well they're not blips actually I've figured out that they're triggers. I've been calling them blips for about four months. But there's two kinds from SRAM and these are the triggers. And um, it's more of a mouse click than a blip. Anyway, I liked them so much that I put the real blips on my other bike. And then they're more or less in the same spot for the thumb position when I'm on the hoods. No, when I'm on the tops. <sighs> then we got the fork and the headset which I think is beautiful. It's sculpted, it's got a proprietary stem, and uh, it's really quite good motorbike. Boom. And I was a bit worried that I might scratch my knee. Boom. I might scratch my knee once in a while while climbing on a steep ascent. That's never ever happened. Um, and uh, the headset's quiet and it's never rattled loose or anything like that, not that you'd expect it to. Okay, next, next topic. Yeah, it's from the, the Pond family, in other words, Cervelo and, um, Cervelo and Focus, but thank God it doesn't have the rat quick release system. It's just got a, I don't know what you're going to call it, a spinny thing, you screw it in. And then you just sort of leave the lever there and everything's good. Okay, boring. Forks. Hey, they're elegant, aren't they? They're really pretty. A bit dirty at the moment. G'day, bike rider. 
Uh, a bit dirty at the moment, but that's life. Oh, wheels. Like, really, could I talk about wheels and tyres any more than I have on this review? Basically, that's the only thing I've ever discussed. So we'll move right along. Frame, bloody unreal. Like, they say it's aero, and uh, I believe them, you know. It's not just that I'm trying to repeat marketing hyperbole, but it feels bloody fast, that's a fact. So there you go. I'll keep it quick. Uh, it's UCI approved, which basically means two thirds of fuck all to me. Um, so, but um, the good news is, if it means something to you, you can race it. I'm not going to, I'm going to ride it. And I've ridden it a lot. You know what that one was? Bottom bracket. Uh, you know, when we did the install, we put in a no creaks system. I've got news for you. It's true. No creaks. No, no noise at all. No adjustments. Uh, when we built it, Anthony said, hmm, I think that might loosen up a bit as time goes on. Anthony was right again. It's uh, it's a bit, spins nicely, doesn't make a noise, and I basically ignored it. Again, a little bit dirty, sorry about that. And there we have the derailleur, tell you about that in a sec. Okay, so uh, 10 to 36. Yeah, probably one of the best components on this bike. Like seriously, it's great range. I don't give a damn about the big jump between each shift. Like, if that used to be the quest for those tiny, tight little clusters, then those tiny, tight little clusters can basically stay on my old bike. Yeah, there's absolutely, like, who gives a shit if you take a bit of a jump going up a hill when you're trying to get an easier gear. That's the whole point. Now, I've used the 36 a bit. I demonstrated it earlier today, and I know I'm gonna miss it when I go back to my bike. I know I'm gonna miss it, because when I'm tired, and I've had a big day, and I just think, oh no, there's still that hill to go, and it might be just like a tiny little, like, rise, and it can just break your spirits and you just think, oh no, I need to go home a bit earlier. But with this, I'm like, I just keep going. I've got all the range I need. And if I'm super despo, I can use that thing here. I'll show you what it is. Yeah, it's got a front derailleur and they say it works, but I haven't really used it. So uh, that was basically about 6,000 kilometers of riding with the device that weighs a little bit, and I could have easily never have put on the bike. Okay, so I think I've just, I mean, I've talked myself into it so many times during this test period, but I know that the one buy is gonna be the thing of the future. Isn't that right, Kelland? Okay, uh, Kelland O'Brien, runner up in the nationals, he did that on a one buy system but he's a freak. That was a bit tricky, but I think you get the picture. That's my Repente saddle, seriously. Another one of my favorite components of this test period. This bike started out with an Astuto saddle, a ride branded one, which is bloody beautiful and super elegant and lovely and comfy. And then I got uh, a two white beauties sent over from Italy. One's like a, a splitty system from Repente. I can't remember the name, a speed or something. And then there's this one, which is slightly heavier and it's gonna stay on every bike I ride now. If I switch, I'm taking this saddle off and taking it with me. Yeah, that one's a bit trickier to film, but 
hopefully you got the point. That's me, seat post. So it's like a D shape. And really, this is a huge talking point of this bike. I talked earlier about the seat post, or the seat angle, seat tube angle, being a little bit steeper, more upright, let's say. And I think they've done it deliberately so that they can bang in a big load of setback on the saddle, rather, big load of setback on the seat post. <coughs> Hello. And they've done it for, it's so obvious why. I don't even feel like I need to spell it out, but I will. Okay, look. I don't know if you can see, but the point I'm trying to make is, basically, it's not a big fat seat post that just annihilates your body. It's a nice, slim, forgiving one that provides a little bit of comfort and the setback basically sort of exaggerates that effect. So, bloody unreal. Another one of my favorite products of this bike. All right, I'm gonna concentrate on the road ahead. Hardly looked where I've been going, I've just been talking about the bike. Okay, so round two. This is really cool. I'm glad I've done this. I've been wanting to do it for ages. I just don't get around to it. Anyway, second loop. So from uh, Tempo Cafe to West Head and back. Uh, it's about 40k or whatever, 38. And uh, just had a little bacon and egg roll and a long black. Thank you very much, Dan and Mariah. I love that place. And I'm back on the focus. <laughs> I've sung about it before. Focus is out, go max, boom. Um, so, wow, totally, totally cool. Like literally coffee stop and a different bike. And now I'm gonna do that descent and I'll tell you a little bit more. Um, after I've uh, had another kilometer or two on this bike. But I do love this road and it's lovely with the sun up and it's really, really pretty and the bike feels great, and I'm happy to be on mine. No Strava records today, because I'm filming, but uh, you know, I'm at 50k an hour, I haven't been on this bike for months, and I feel totally, totally, totally at ease, and it feels like it's wonderful. It's so predictable. I put the zips on it, so I got the 303S's. I took the Campagnolo Chamales that I've been riding off. Anyway, so my point is, I've got Pirelli Chinterado tires. And um, might sort of need to concentrate on the road a little bit. But um, it feels really, to be honest, just a little bit taller. Now, that's because the Focus has got a higher bottom bracket, I think. I don't know. They're tears of joy. <laughs> I'm not crying, I promise you. I'll tell you more after a little while, okay? I'm just gonna put the camera away. Yes, I'm there. Um, and I've had, I don't know, five kilometers on my new on my new old bike, my old new bike, my bike, that I haven't ridden for ages. And first impressions while I go up this little hill. Um, a lot taller, I said that already. And I can't figure out why, because the saddle height's the same. So I just feel a lot higher up on the bike. Maybe I'm slightly more forward than on Cervelo. Not sure. I'm gonna get to the top of this hill and I'll tell you more. Yeah, so I'm going downhill. I'll see if I can talk without the wind noise interrupting too much. One second bike rider. Doesn't matter. Yo buddy, he was struggling real bad. 
uh, training a little bit now, but I don't, I don't care. I will note that it's a little bit twitchier on this bike. Like I notice a different head angle. That's obvious. It's just with the Cervelo. Wow, well, got to go to the big ring. Hang on, I forgot how to do that. Okay, double shift, double paddle, whatever. So with the Cervelo, I've done a shitload of filming, and every time I wanted to pull the camera out, no problems. Like pull it out, fiddle around, go no-handed, bloody blah, off you go. This one too, full, full, full stability, but. I just think I have to be a little bit more wary because the steering is just a little bit twitchier as in more direct as in the head angles steeper I'm pretty sure at least that's how it rides so I'm not looking at numbers I'm just telling you about feel uh, and then okay I'll just go to a nice light gear which I'm not in at the moment hang on far out front derailleur remember them it's been a while anyway um so just as i go up a little incline oh uh, narrow handlebars it's good to be back i do love you like here hang on you see them they're me zips and they're like look at my hand see comfy as can be like i like being there I think I'm going to reposition the blips. I want them a little bit closer to the stem. This is my first ride with them. And good job, Edwin. Really neat, but I will figure out a better place for them. And I was just saying about an hour earlier when I was coming away from West Head on the Cervelo, how the 10 to 36 cassette is one of my favorite products totally true and how a one by arrangement is perfectly suitable in the modern world with the wide system at least with a longer cage derailleur and all the bits and pieces that they've done to make the gears a little bit more a wider range that's the name I'm sure uh, so but I will say it's quite nice to have that chain alignment as in not crossing the chain as in not going as in not going from the big chain ring at the front to the 36 at the back and crossing it and hearing just those little grabs of the teeth a tiny tiny I said how quiet it was but now that I've got pretty much a correct chain alignment as in I go to the small ring when I need easier gears little ring front chain ring little you know what I mean and this is as quiet as a mouse, quiet as a mouse. Also, I was talking about how I didn't give a shit about the big jump of gears from, you know, from the 10 all the way up to the 36. I didn't mind that you'd sort of jump up a few teeth at a time, but it's also nice now that I'm on this block. To, uh, you know, just do little subtle changes. Oh, I might have a little bit of an easier gear, etc. So, you know, exactly what I liked about the other system is pretty much what I like about this system too. Hang on, got to use two fingers, two hands. Front chain ring, remember that? Uh, or front derailleur, remember that? Okay, that joke's got old. I won't do that again, I promise. Okay, I'm going to concentrate on my ride and I'll tell you a few more thoughts, maybe at the turnaround. And back to me. I'll just do a couple of little, uh, what do you do, flybys, like fly around something, you know, show the bike off. Pretty, isn't it? It's a lovely bike. I still love it. There is a sheen of water over the road that was dry when I was on the other bike. So, 
you can't do a head-to-head -head comparison because the conditions are different but I continue with uh, the spot the difference exercise nonetheless Okay, just to spare you me gibbering while I ride, I might just cover off a couple of points about the old Focus is Alco Max. Now that I'm back on it, there it is in all its glory. A little bit of rain coming in, so I'll just make sure that the lens is clean. Anyway, so um, I'm going to tell you, like there was a bit of surprise on the descent down here to the West Head turnaround, and that is that uh, without any effort, um, and while not filming, admittedly, because the first the first time on the on the Cervelo I was filming, so I was riding one-handed. But anyway, I was I didn't feel like I was compromising my speed. But uh, I think I came about like 10 or 15 kilometres an hour faster on this thing. Now, a couple of things to note: different wheels, Aero ones like the Zips, 303 S's, uh, older tyres, and higher pressure. So. The NV uh, G23s have got, uh, I put in 42 PSI today because I didn't want a huge, you know, chalk and cheese difference between um, one bike and the next. So I sort of wanted more or less comparative. So they're a little bit harder than recommended. And these I put in 52 PSI. So um, there you go, that's the difference. I don't know if it was the rolling. We'll see, there's actually very, 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 very little wind. Actually, I could say there's no wind. So, on the way back, on the way back, what we'll do is we'll just. I'll, I did make a point of not necessarily touching the brakes and not necessarily pedalling for that bit that you, you go down past the toll booth, that or the entrance to the national park, and then you take the, the left turn and then you sort of duck down to Macars Creek. So I'm going to do the same on this and um, and just see what old Strava tells me afterwards. Um, it's not a fair test because conditions are different. My, I've got a bacon and egg roll in my guts now and different things. But, um, and I'm maybe a little bit more tired or something. Anyway, I'll stop gibbering. I'll just let the pictures tell the story, okay? And bloody hell, look at that. It's magic. Why wouldn't you ride here? You see my point? Was it obvious enough? What I'm saying is, yeah, you can trust the chain from uh, probably the 48 at the front, I forget, to the probably 28 at the back, I forget. And it's not that fantastic, but like get a little bit of chain alignment up here and, um, you know, use the front derailleur to avoid that you know what I mean? <laughs> 